Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. Every bladesmith has a favorite knife. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have here a dagger, a kukri, a karambit, a coffin handle buoy, and a jambia. You will need to choose a blade style and combine it with a different knife's handle in order to create your own mashup blade. Good luck, your three hour starts now. Combining two different blades into one, you really have to think about it, because some of them may look cool on paper, but it's not gonna really blend well unless you really look into the details. I'm looking at these knives, and in the back of my mind is Jay Nielsen swinging as hard as he can on a deer antler. The blades have to be good for an antler chop. It has to be good for a fish slice. That's a lot of different iterations. I decide I'm going to go with the Kukri blade because I think it's best designed for the challenge. And I think it'll marry up with that coffin handle. That's a winner. We've got a coffin handle Kukri over here at events as well. I settle on the Bowie knife blade, which is just tried and true blade, and that Karambit style handle. It's got a good feel to it when it's in the hand. It's got a nice curve to it. And I'm thinking, that's going to work for me. I want to save time. So I decided to draw the billet and forge the knife simultaneously. Big Blue is a beast. I need one of those in my shop. Now that they're into the shaping phase, Big Blue can quickly taco your metal just pop it flat. Ooh. Big Blue's got a lot of control, and he gets away from me, and he crushes my tip. At this point, I realize that the power tools allow me to move metal real quick, but I'm getting to the detail work, and at this point, they're dangerous. I need to start doing this by hand. I hope that crush tip is not an issue. Heat, beat, repeat. I'm done pressing that steel down to a workable size. So as I'm shaping this knife, I'm working on the blade first. But with a buoy, a lot of times you're going to put a guard on there and maybe a hidden tang or maybe a coffin tang. So I'm keeping in the back of my head that, hey, this handle is going to be different than what a buoy calls for. Casey's buoy is starting to also take shape. Yeah, I'm really liking the way his buoy style blade is coming out. But I'm really worried about that karambit handle, especially for the antler chop. So I'm trying to put the bend on this with my hammer, and it's not working really well. A kukri without the bend is not a kukri. That's the defining factor of a kukri. So I need to figure out how to put the bend in now. We got Sean on the horn of the anvil, really trying to knock that belly, that inside curve, into the coffin handle kukri. That's the way I shake kukris. I've seen where people bang it over the horn, and gravity will naturally put that bend in. And it bent down, right like I thought. I'm done putting the bend in the cookery, and I'm on to profiling my handle to make sure that it looks like a coffin handle. Right now, this is tang section. It's really fat. I chose to leave it thick because it's always easier to remove material than it is to add on. It's time to go quench. Vince just quenched his blade. It looked like it was a good temperature. The handle wasn't uh, heated up at all. I have no cracks, no warp, and I have a hard blade. I know in great shape. We did the same thing, bro. Yeah, buddy. Looks good, man. My profile's done, and I know what a good blade feels like. So in my hand, I'm making sure I'm swinging it around to make sure that it's not sliding around the hand, not want to jump out of my grip. It's that time for the heat treat. That's smart that Casey didn't harden the whole blade, because you do one of those rings, you forge it in, there's always a lot of cleanup on those. Yeah. I'm hoping that nothing went catastrophically wrong. I don't want to pull out a banana. I bring it out, and it's just perfectly straight. All right, sounds hard. It's time to quench, so never having quenched W1, I'm very concerned about the temperature of the blade. I just don't know. Is that too hot? Oh. It's hotter than snot. That is no bueno. I have a soft spot in the recurve portion of my blade. I bite the bullet and do it again. Hopefully, it's going to harden. Three, two, one. Bladesmith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of mashup competition is over. Woo!
Bladesmiths, I know you had fun making these mix and match weapons, but I know this is your favorite part, the strength test. We are not only going to test the overall construction, but how well you designed your mashup weapons for these tests. What I'm going to do is take each of your mix and match weapons here and smash them repeatedly and violently into these antlers. Now, keep in mind, I'm not concerned about what your blades do to the antler. I want to see what the antler is going to do to your blades. Sean, you're up first. <laughs> Let's do it. is gone. Your edge itself held up well. It's just a small bit of shine to it, and it bit in nicely. But you've got a pretty large grain structure here, so it was a little too high a temperature when you quenched. And if you look at the bottom here, there's like a little bit of a brownish discoloration. That means there was a stretch fracture in there. Could have been too small to see it. But obviously, it was there. Right. Well, Sean, unfortunately, Jay has a way with blades. <laughs> yeah. Your blade has failed after five strikes on the antler. It doesn't mean that you're out of this competition, because each of you will have to survive five strikes in order to move forward in this competition. All right, Jay. Casey, after seeing what happened to Sean's blade, how you feeling? Give it hell. All right, Casey, it looks like your Karambit Bowie mashup survived. Great construction. Sean, your fate lies in the hands of how strong Vince's blade is. Jay? All I need is for my blade to survive five hits on that antler. My heart has never been beating as hard as it is right now. Well, Vince, five successful strikes on the antler. Pushes you forward in this competition and unfortunately pushes you out of the competition, Sean. Please exit the forge. My goal coming here, A, don't blow the place up, check, and B, don't be the first guy that gets sent home. So I did what I came here to do. Anything else was going to be icing on the cake for me. You have to do something you love, and I still love it, and I'm going to go home and make more blades as soon as I get there.